This episode is brought to you by the Slash and Cast Podcast Network. Discover all of our shows at slashandcast.network. Dang, spoilers. Oh, you did that a long time ago. <laughs> They're yeah, not know, real. True. They're just my personality. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Conjecturing a Horrors podcast. With me is Laura. Hello. And Greg. What's up, guys? And I'm your host, Rob. Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? How's the gold room going? Lit. It's late. It's late. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> we're, dra- we're dragging in intro uh, conversations into the episode now. You're not. You're just going to say that, Greg? You're not going to have any form of reference of what the hell that means? No. No, we'll no get context. There. Well, I'm sure we'll, we'll get, get there. there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Cool. An cool, inside cool. joke between us and Lloyd. Okay. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this week we're doing 2003's Identity. Uh, so what are you guys wearing tonight? What do we got going on? Is it lit? Uh, what do you got going on, Greg? Uh, tonight I am coming as Larry. He's the hotel manager. Um, you know, I've got the little wife beater and the the purple. I don't know what. It's some kind of purple button up shirt and a vest very interesting combo and i've got my bat we'll get to that but uh yeah armed with the bat today nice nice uh, what about you laura what do you got going on tonight i'm dressed as paris i had i made sure my hair i took a shower right before we recorded so my hair is all soaking wet from all the rain <laughs> nice and i'm wearing a leather jacket because apparently leather jackets and jean skirts make you a hooker according to this movie <laughs> Which I have a huge problem with. Oh, see, I feel like we should get this out front right now. What are we calling her this episode? That one episode, you weren't letting us say prostitute. We had to say streetwalker, woman of the night, whatever it was. What? Are, what? Are, what's the title tonight, Laura? What are we allowed to call her? She's Amanda Pete or Paris. Oh, so we're not allowed to say what she does in the movie. What is her they keep calling her a hooker. Is that confirmed? <laughs> Oh, yes. yeah, of course. There's the one scene where she's literally like has like a birthday cake on a naked old man's chest. Why does that make her a hooker? Because uh, I'm pretty sure n- that guy had to pay her to do that because he definitely <laughs> couldn't have got her. You know? <laughs> uh, so yeah, so me, what I'm wearing tonight, uh, I'm just wearing one of our conjecture shirts, our 237 shining shirt. Uh, but I also do have uh, like, a similar to Laura. You're Laura, if you got to see you're carrying your oranges. Oh, my God, I forgot. Look at all of my oranges, you guys. Well, mm, that is a lot. For my orange growth. Oh my goodness! <laughs> why do you? Why? Why do? You, why do you have so many? You could have just got one. Yeah, orange. you could have just gotten one of those. <laughs> that that, that is a problem. <laughs> It's from my orange grove. From your orange grove? Well, that's making me angry. So I have my little gardening tool here. I'm going to hit you in the face, maybe. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, so I'm a little what, Tommy, Timmy. What is this fucking Timmy. name? Little Timmy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, little Timmy tonight. Um, so uh, like we said, we're doing 2003's Identity. Um, so if you get, anybody wants to see what we're wearing tonight, uh, you got to follow us Twitter and Instagram, at Conjecturing Pod on both. Uh, and then also for the merch store for my shirt, tpublic.com slash user slash Conjecturing Pod. So let's see what we're drinking tonight now. Let me get the drop going here. What's in the cups? All right, Laura, Paris, woman of the night. What are we drinking tonight? <laughs> there you go. Woman <laughs> of the night. <laughs> it sounds like a superhero when you say it that way. Oh, my gosh. You can say that. But the, okay, the yeah, yeah. correct term is sex worker. There you go. Okay. Okay, go for it. What are we drinking? We are drinking a Long Island iced tea, or as Greg called it, a leet, because we're getting leet. <laughs> 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 Hence our opening conversation already. Or it's, it's already off the rails a bit. Getting um, real late. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> actually, Greg picked this one because uh, Long Island iced teas look like dirty, murky rainwater. Oh. But it actually is really cool because in this drink, there are actually 10 unique identities. I mm-hmm. mean, ingredients. <laughs> So we've got tequila, rum, gin, vodka, triple sec, simple syrup, some cola, lemon juice, a lemon wedge, and we added an extra orange wedge for Paris. Oh, very cute. That's very, nice. it's very, very nice. Good job. Good job. So how, how are you guys liking the drink? Uh, is anybody lit already? How are you feeling? <laughs> oh, yeah. Laura's gone already. I mean, Paris is already gone. Yeah. Oh, she's taking a big chug right now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's a, there's a room key in your hair now. What's going on tonight? Oh, oh shit. shit. Oh, we're in trouble. 
<laughs> yeah, but good choice, Greg. Good choice. Uh, it's actually very tasty. A lot of alcohol. So we'll see what happens in the next 45 minutes here. Um, yeah, so let's do a couple of show updates real fast. We, we just want to remind everybody listening, uh, if you're, you know, to please rate our show, uh, whatever podcast platform you're listening to it on. We really appreciate that. Um, I don't think we got any emails or anything from any, uh, any listeners out there. Uh, last week we did coherence. Um, do you guys have anything from coherence? Did you see that meteor in the sky a couple of weeks ago? Yes. Oh, that was crazy. Did, did you guys automatically think to yourself, like, I'm not leaving my house. I need to get glow sticks. <laughs> like, I got to get prepared. Because that should look insane. Yeah, definitely. It looked like the movie, too, with the pieces breaking off of it. It's just so bizarre because this, I know we've talked about this before, but this is not the first time that we watch a movie and then something related ends yeah. up in the news, either like the next day, the next week. And so, I mean, we watched Coherence before this occurred. This is becoming a regular occurrence, honestly. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure like the universe revolves around us, guys. So, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, so everybody out there, you're welcome for the meteor shower <laughs> if, you, if you saw it. <laughs> Uh, but what did you guys Crazy. have anything from the movie? Do you guys have anything more from the movie? I watched it a sixth time. Uh, just wow. being like, but I'm done. My wife said I can't watch it anymore. She put the kibosh on that. Uh, so I'm done now. But what about you guys? Did you guys watch it any more times? Do you have any more thoughts? Anything else? Yeah, I didn't watch it again, but I, I definitely thought about it uh, a few times afterwards. I, I still feel like I'm missing lots of pieces. I can't wait to watch it again, though. But you yeah, Laura? me too. I'm yeah. planning on watching it again. Um, but I, already, just like thinking back on certain scenes we were talking about, and like thinking about how, man, I already thought there was like four sets of them in that scene, but there were probably so many more than that. You know, yeah. it's just it's so mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. If you guys, if anybody listening didn't listen to last week's episode, Coherence, please go back and listen to it. And if you didn't watch the movie, please watch the movie. It definitely was, watch the movie. Yeah, it was fucking mind bending. It was a really fucking cool movie. Really great movie. Um, so this week we're doing uh identity. Like we said, this is Greg's movie pick. Greg, so why did you choose this movie? Oh, I thought of it uh, the moment we finished Seven. It's it's very similar in tone, environment, um, you know, getting to the bottom of a mystery. It's it's very much a whodunit mm. type of murder mystery uh, type of movie. And um, you know, I hadn't I haven't seen it since it first came out, so I thought it was time. Wow, that's crazy. What about you, Laura? I mean, you saw it in the theaters, correct? I think we all saw it in the theaters, right? Mm-hmm. Saw it in theaters. theaters. I've seen it a ton since then. I mean, this is definitely a kind of a regular rotational movie in our house, for sure. Yeah, I feel like me too. I, I do remember seeing it in theaters. And then, of course, like I said, it, it's on fucking FX and TNT and TBS all the time. So I feel like I usually yeah. stumble onto it once a year and just fucking watch it. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but I'm interested when we get into the review of here, your guys' first time seeing it compared to now. Uh, I just kind of go through that. I think it's going to be maybe different uh, if it's anything like mine. Mm -hmm. um, so let's get to our horror segment of the week. Uh, this week we have... Okay, we got a game this week. Got a game. Greg, uh, Greg surprised me and Laura uh, like, a, like the ending of this movie. Oh! There's like Shit. a whole database Greg made on Excel of like all the characters, pictures from the movie and their identities and the questions. And go ahead and forgive the fact that I put Las Vegas prostitute here. I should be sex I worker. Saw that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my all right, God. all right. Let me let me go ahead and break this thing down. Okay, so this game is called Identity. So the objective is to guess the other person's identities. The best of three rounds wins. So the setup is this. You guys will assume a new identity at the start of each round. So you're going to have to text me the name of one of these characters. Ooh. All right. Uh, and you can go ahead and pick one now and send it to me. And okay. so what happens is each round, you guys will take turns asking three personality questions from the list below. You can see it. The answerer must respond using one of the answers, which I'm going to reveal for you as we play the game. Uh, and after all the evidence is gather gathered, you guys will go back and forth. Then you guys will be given three chances to guess the other person's identity. It's a, it's a bit like guess who, right? So the first person to guess the other's identity in the shortest amount of rounds and, and time wins the round. If neither of you guesses correctly in three tries, then the point goes to my decision. It will be based on if I chose the same answer. So, all right. So you guys have <laughs> sent me your... Your, your characters, and they are not the same, so that's good. So <laughs> here we go. We're going to start off with, uh, <clears throat> with Rob. 
take a look at the list below. And by the way, once you pick a question to ask the other person, um, it's going to be off the table. So nobody can ask that question again. So start with the question and uh, let me know which one you want to ask Laura for her identity. Okay. Uh, let's just do, let's do the first one on, on there. What's your favorite board game? What's your favorite board game? Sure. All right. Go ahead, Laura. Here are your options. Shoots and ladders, chess, clue, operation, or twister? Mm, I'm going twister. <laughs> Wait, I'm like already confused though. Am I supposed to just guess what I think the person I guess the answer would be? No, Laura has an identity and so she's telling you answers to, to, to your question. So she is this person and she's trying to figure out what he would or she would say. Okay. Okay. I get it. Okay. 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 All right. Go ahead, Laura, with your question. Okay. Rob. Ooh, what's the last TV show you binge watch? What's the last? All right. Here we go. Let me put the answers on the board. Um, all right. Make your pick, Rob, between Friends, South Park, The Mandalorian, Dexter, or The Office. Um, I'm going to say Dexter. All right. Okay. Rob's question. Okay. Rob's question. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. What else do we got down here? Um, what's your favorite Sesame Street character? Oh my God. Let's see where that is. Um, Hold on. Is that toward the bottom? Yeah. All right. Nice. All right. Oh, I almost. You just, you just came up with your answer. You almost said your answer. <laughs> All right. There you go. There are your options. Yep. Um, yeah. Oscar the Grouch. Hmm. Nice. All right. Now, Rob, see, the strategy here is to consider the two questions you've already asked or even the questions you've already asked and see if you can try to fit together a mental image of, of this person's personality based on the other two that you've already oh, asked. Wow. So. That was that was not my strategy. My strategy was just ask the dumbest question on here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Laura. <laughs> well, now you give Laura that cue. So that's not, that sucks. OK. <laughs> I've only asked one question oh, you're so right. far. You only, yeah. Well, I've answered. I've asked two dumb ones, so you're, you're ahead already. Okay, let's see. <laughs> what is your favorite podcast? <laughs> podcast. Uh, let's see. My favorite podcast would be oh, easily uh, the Conjecturing Podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a curveball. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. It's an option. Come on. Everybody should be listening to that. Come on. Any of nice. these polls. <laughs> All right, Rob, I think you have what? One more question? One more? Yep. Man, see now I know now I know I should be actually asking a good question. So let me uh, let me look at these a little bit harder now. Um, let's go with uh da -da -da. what is it? What, what's your biggest pet peeve? So your options are annoying children. People who spoil movies, TV shows, gluten-free food, out-of-touch guitar, guitar guy at parties, <laughs> or uh, slow internet slash Wi-Fi. Mm, I think I'm going to go annoying children. Ah, interesting. Hmm. All right. That's your last question. You get one more, Laura, for, for uh, Rob. I got it. What's your go-to song at karaoke night? Oh, man. Should I Stay or Should I Go by The Clash, A Whole New World, Aladdin, <laughs> Aladdin. I Will Survive, Gloria Gaynor, <laughs> Since You've Been Gone, or Karma Chameleon? Uh, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say mine is actually the same as my character, Since You've Been Gone, Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> 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 I love that song. I love Belton, that song in the, in, the, in the karaoke. All right. All right. Here we go. Now is the guessing round. So, Rob, <laughs> Laura's personality she her favorite hmm. board game is twister her biggest pet peeve is annoying children and her favorite sesame street character is oscar the grouch who is she guessing time starts now i'm gonna say carolyn no by laura's nope. non-response i think no nope ah dang it all right hmm. oh can i can oh I yeah guess? let me set it up so yeah rob the last TV show you've been to watch, Dexter, your favorite podcast is the Conjecturing Podcast. And your go-to karaoke song is Since You've Been Gone. Laura, <laughs> guessing time starts now. Rob, you're Rob. <laughs> how, how did you know? <laughs> fucking know. Wait, you, you, wait, 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 wait. You knew it by the answers I gave or because you assume I would just pick him first right away? No, as soon as you said Dexter, he was yeah, my number. That was oh. my one. Right when I said it, I was like, damn, I think that's way too obvious shit. But you have to pick the one that's your character. You can't lie. Well, I want to win, so fuck that. 
<laughs> but Dexter could be other characters too, you know? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. He, he, he's right. a vigilante, and I figure a few of these mm-hmm. characters fancy themselves as vigilante, so okay. you never know. All right, so so Laura gets a point, or we, do we keep going? Yeah, Laura gets a point. So let me kind of put the names on the board here. Who, Round who one. Was, Laura, who were you? Laura, tell them, uh, reveal your identity. I am Lou. Oh, Lou? <laughs> Man, nobody would pick Lou. You. He's a whole <laughs> husband. Wow. He was the, he'd be the last person I would even choose because he's a loser. Oh. <laughs> exactly. Why do you think I, I picked know. him? dang it. We are complete opposite. I chose the one that's like, oh, it's my name. I should pick that, and Laura's like the smart one being like, let me choose the, the least likely person uh laura's <laughs> see, nobody can beat laura at these fucking games she's too smart she's really good i, I feel yeah i felt like you knew by the first round laura that was i know that was pretty rough all right guys text me your next uh identity and by the way uh as you can see rob and lou are off the table as are the questions you picked you're going down laura i'm gonna pick uh the guy in the freezer <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's in that white space see. that you see in the bottom right corner i didn't i didn't put him there all right. Okay, um, I got mine. I got my name first. Don't can't take it. It's mine. <laughs> uh, you guys have to pick a new one. You pick the ah! same one. <laughs> ah! oh I don't don't say who it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Well, okay. Well, you right. know, um, yeah. yeah, I know. We already know. We, we know who we own picked. <laughs> don't say it. <laughs> As if it matters. Uh, um, okay. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to go with... Uh, okay, I'll go down because uh, that's going to be interesting. Okay. Um... <laughs> okay, we we're we're good to go. I have to I have to I have to say right away. This is a this is a pretty smart game, Greg. This is pretty. This is legit. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Rob, you started last one. Uh, this one's gonna be you, you, Laura. You start off with uh with the question. All right, Rob, what's your most vivid childhood memory? Wait, who did I pick again? Okay, and I already <laughs> 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 okay, uh, this is why I don't play games, guys. Usually these two. Uh, what's your what's most your vivid most... childhood memory? Sleepover parties, learning Santa wasn't real, toilet papering houses, school field trips, or building forts and castles? Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to say uh, school field trips. And you can't lie. Yeah, you have to do your best because also, by the way, yeah. uh-huh. if you guys don't guess in three guesses, then it comes down to what I think is the, uh, the best answers, which are, you know, accurate. So yeah, I'm not, I'm uh, not lying. I just, I just don't, I don't know if I know this person that well. I'm trying my best. But yeah, all right, go for it. Uh, Rob. Okay, my turn. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, what phone app do you use the most? You can't say grinder. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Here are your choices. Facebook, Instagram, Pandora, Netflix, or Uber. <laughs> oh shit um i'm gonna say uber okay okay oh <laughs> okay i think i got you i think i got you yes all right all right, all right. All right. i go for it laura uh, all right can i guess now can i guess now for a bonus point no we go <laughs> three rounds i think i know <laughs> okay hang on let me let me if i can get the right question Come on, you got time frame. Let's go. What household appliance could you not live without? Hmm. Uh, let's see help if I me. can force that one. Uh, it's not going to help you. Greg does not oh, give these answers. Let's see. Um... The Roomba, coffee maker, electric drill, bottle opener, or the Brita filter? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say the Brita filter. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right, your turn, Rob. Oh, uh, who's your favorite Disney villain? Laura, your options are Maleficent, Gothel, that's the lady from Tangled, the witch. Like who? Gaston, Captain Gantu, the shark from Lilo and Stitch, or Shere Khan, Jungle Book. Oh, I'm going to have to go Gaston, Beauty and the Beast. You're a liar. You're being a liar right now. I'm not! I don't believe that for your character. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the answer she picked. I have reason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, I didn't pick Gothel. I picked oh, Gaston. Oh, yeah. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> By the way, did anybody know that the witch's name was Gothel in that movie? I, 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 didn't, I didn't know, know. Who that was. Yeah. Gothel is awful. Let's just erase that from our <laughs> okay. memories right now. All right. Okay. Uh, Rob, you're up. Uh, okay. Oh, let's... no, wait. Was it? No, it's I. It's my, my turn. Bad. Yeah. Okay. Um. Got it. At a party, where can somebody find you? Uh, last question on the list. Rob, your <laughs> options are... In the kitchen doing party tricks, at the beer pong table, passed out in the corner, looking for the Wi-Fi password, or having a smoke outside. 
Man, this is a tough one. Let's see. I'm going to go. I'm going to say passed out in the corner. <laughs> you guys are your answers are funny for all for reasons only i understand I know. it's great <laughs> okay uh let's see <clears throat> i think rob you've got one last one, one and okay yeah laura's out of questions yeah okay, right. okay i gotta go a good one here uh laura threw me with fucking gaston even though i think she's a liar uh <laughs> let's see uh what's your what's your biggest fear phobia all right, your options are agoraphobia, which is fear of public spaces and crowds, fear of marriage, fear of failure, fear of cooking, or autophobia, the fear of being alone. Definitely fear of failure. All right. Okay, we're all out. So who uh, guessed last time starting off? I think Rob did. Rob. Okay, his most vivid childhood memory was taking school field trips. <laughs> what, the household appliance he just can't live without is the Brita filter, and at a party... You can find him passed out in the corner. Who is Rob? Oh, man. I think it's between two. It's hard. Um, all right. My first guess is I'm going to go Timmy. Incorrect. Wrong. Damn. All right, all right, Rob, you are up. So Laura's personality, her biggest fear phobia is the fear of failure. Uh, Attachophobia. The phone app she uses the most is Uber. And her favorite Disney villain is Gaston. Who is Laura's personality, identity, go? I mean, I know the answer, but it's going to see if Laura lies or not. Uh, are you Carolyn? Nope. You're a liar, then. You're a liar. You're a liar, Laura. You're cheating. No wonder you win all the games because you cheat. Oh, my God. This is bullshit. This is a bullshit game. Ask Greg. I'm not Carolyn. No, it's, it's not Carolyn. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're not Carolyn, but your answers were Carolyn, so you're a liar. Mm-hmm. All right. Nope. That's one strike for you guys. You got two strikes left. All right. Uh, Laura. I don't even want to play this game anymore. I don't want to play this game anymore. Oh, suck it up, baby. (laughs) Okay, Rob, you are Alice. Yeah, so it is Alice. Okay. All right, Rob, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to start the timer and you have to try to guess. (laughs) You have to try to guess Laura's identity as fast as you can to see if you can match or beat her time. And the clock starts now. Okay, it's uh, Ed, Eris, Rose, Ler, Ginny, Lou, <laughs> Georges, me, Turk, Curran. That's uh, that's my guess. I, I have no idea. I'm just gonna say Larry. I don't know. Oh, it is not Larry. No, it yeah, is. Yeah, because it's Carolyn. The answer is Carolyn. <laughs> like to explain my answers, please. I don't even want to hear your lies anymore. I am George, and let me explain why. Mm-hmm. Out of all of the apps on my phone, I'm not really big into Facebook and Instagram. Maybe Pandora, not really. Netflix, maybe. But Uber, boy, do I need that because I get into a lot of car accidents and I don't know how to fucking drive. <laughs> exactly. So I need Uber. Okay? Yeah, you got into one that wasn't his problem. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, my favorite Disney villain, you know, I like the classics because I'm an older dude and I just think Gaston is so silly. Ha 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 ha. And last but not least, I clearly have a huge phobia of failure because yeah. I know everything. Well, you need to fucking start dating Carolyn because you're the same fucking person. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> your, your wife's dead now. You better hop on that shit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Nice, nice, nice round two, guys. Okay, so round two sure. goes goes to Laura. Uh, that's 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 two out of three. If you guys want to do a like third one for, for fun, we, we can roll it. Otherwise, let's, let's go for a third one, but let's make it a double or nothing. Winner take all. And so there... Oh, all right, let's all right do come it. on, Laura. Come on, Laura. Right. Get those big balls on the table. All right, l- okay. let me let me clear the board here. We'll do round three. <laughs> I'm, I'm, ang- I'm angry right now. If anybody doesn't know, <laughs> this is another reason why I don't play games. That I hate to lose. <laughs> okay, round two. So that was what was funny is like when you guys sent in your. Uh, you basically, you picked a couple, two, yeah. you know, one part mm-hmm. of the couple. I thought that was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Definitely wanted to see how that played out, and it did I'm, not disappoint. I'm definitely getting divorced. <laughs> I'm definitely divorcing Laura. Yeah. Well, we're both dead, so who cares? Oh, well, I guess that's true. Yeah. You're not dead. You're just you never existed. <laughs> oh, I guess that's true. Mm, yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna start this one, let's, Rob. Let's. I feel like you know I want to alleviate some of your grievances. Let's you know let's take <laughs> okay. it back. Let's get you kicking off uh, with the first question for. Laura's identity. Um, Wait, I, gotta, guys, I, gotta choose, I gotta choose my yeah, person though, right? I haven't even. Oh yeah, yeah. Like and, <laughs> and you can't pick one that has already been picked. Dang! Yeah. So actually, the possibilities are getting less. So it's even less likely. Shit. 
Yeah. Uh, okay. It's even more embarrassing if I don't get this on Jesus. Um, okay. Let's see. I'm going to go. Oh, I hate this fucking game. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm like second guessing everything right now. Okay. All right. There you go. We are ready to go. All right. Yes. Kick it off, Okay, cool. All right, let's go. Um, <laughs> what do you collect? All right, your options, Laura, are state license plates, Barbie dolls, seashells, baseball cards, or hot sauce packets. <laughs> <laughs> hot sauce packets. That's Greg. <laughs> Ooh, this is tough. Like that's the obvious one, but I don't think that you just got to pick the, the the one that most fits. I mean, all right. I think Greg wants me to pick state license plates, but I, I, I don't love it. No, I d- but... don't want to pick. Well, which one yeah. do you love? Tell me what you do love. I love baseball. Tell me cards. what you love. That's yeah. what I love. All right, then we're Wait, doing yeah, baseball I'm, cards. I'm okay. very, I'm very confused right now. Wait, so did you pick state license plates or baseball cards? Baseball cards. And that's the character or you personally? I don't collect baseball cards, so no, that's not me oh, personally. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you wouldn't. Okay, that's true. Uh... <laughs> all right, your question, Laura. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? All right. <laughs> Who was your first crush? Uh, all right, here we go. Again? Oh my god! <laughs> all right, here are uh, your here are your answers, Rob. Johnny okay. Depp, Prince, Liv Tyler, my high school English teacher, or a bunch of ants under my shoe. <laughs> I can't be honest. It's too obvious. It's not fair. This game is rigged. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I have. Can I lie? <laughs> You can't lie, but you can be creative as long as it's honest and yeah, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, high school English teacher. <laughs> Done. All right. I think uh, so. That you're you're up, Rob. Your question. Wow. Well, let's see. It's one uh, and one. Let's see. Blah blah blah. What was your favorite subject in school? All right, Laura. Your options are PE, geometry, anatomy, pottery, or theater slash acting. Ooh, anatomy for sure. Locked in. Okay, you're, your you're question. Alive. You're being a liar again, I think. Oh my goodness. It's a good answer. It's a good answer. It's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Your question, right? Oh, you got shit, sorry. Two left, yeah. <laughs> We're narrowing it down. We only have a few options left. What is the one thing you would take with you on a deserted island? Oh, all right, Rob, here are your options. A machete, a first aid kit, a hammock. Booze or a Bible? I'm going to say a Bible. (laughs) (laughs) Is that your final answer? Uh, You're sure? uh, Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. (laughs) All right. We're going to have to hear the justifications at the end of every round. So be prepared for that. All right. If I I win, we can just move on. (laughs) (laughs) All right. You're up. You got you got you guys each have one final question to uh, uncover the other's identity. Oh, is it my turn? Oh, okay, yep. Okay, okay. All right. I'm I'm on that desert island reading my Bible right now. I'm trying to get my mindset. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, okay, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Don't say enslaving your child to give you drinks. <laughs> All right, Laura. I would never say that. Here, your what? Well, never. <laughs> <laughs> it's not enslavement i mean it didn't sound like a bad yeah, gig she, to me she, she didn't pick a psychopath <laughs> all right here you go laura your options are wolverine claws super speed jedi mind persuasion x-ray vision or elasticity I'm between two i'm between two i'm between two mm. let's do x-ray vision mm. fascinating all right last last question um, for you what is it your deal <laughs> I told you I'm I angry. hate playing games with you. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't play games with me. You should not be allowed to play games anymore. <laughs> that's my son. He's three and I don't let him win on things. Um, so is it my last question or is that it? Uh, that's it. Laura, you got that's one it? more though. All right. What's the next place in the U.S. on your travel bucket list? Ooh, tough one. Here we go. Here are options, Rob. The Hawaiian Islands, Las Vegas, Nevada, New Orleans, New York City, or the Grand Canyon. I feel like none of these answers would actually be helpful, but uh, let's see. I don't know, New Orleans? <laughs> <laughs> he wants to go to Mardi Gras. I, I do have to say that. Like, he? He? <laughs> uh-oh, Rob. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> okay. I don't use, pro- I use pronouns now. All right. I'm going to let me get the clock ready. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think, Rob, you're going to you're gonna start off first. So. Laura's identity, her favorite subject in high, in school was anatomy. 
she collects baseball cards. And if she could have a superpower, it would be X-ray vision. Who is she? Go. Oh my god. This game sucks. Um, <laughs> I literally have no idea. This, I'm so frustrated. You don't understand. I'm like almost breaking my phone because I'm so angry right now. You got to take um, your best best stab at it. Oh god. I'm just like guessing. I have no idea. And then Laura's going to say some like her, her reasons and I'm like, oh, like that does make sense. But it sucks. I cannot think of them. Um... I'm going to say Ed. You got it! It's oh. Ed! <laughs> All wow. right. So, Laura, you have 50 seconds <laughs> to make your guess count. Rob's character, he would love to go to New Orleans um, as the or next she. place on his book. Or, or she. He or, or she. she. He or she. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> if he or she, you know, I'm saying he as in you, Rob. So oh, okay. If, okay. You, yeah. if, you went, if he went to a deserted island, the one thing that he would take would be, I guess, a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> And then, his, and then his first crush was my high school English teacher. Yeah. Laura, the clocks. You got 50 seconds to get the right answer and go. Dude, I'm going to lose. I don't fucking know. Now we know Ed's off the table now, so it's down to Paris, Rhodes, Larry, Ginny, Timmy, or Carolyn. Mm-hmm. Carolyn? Caroline? No, I really don't know. Good, I'm glad. I'm glad you finally don't know an answer in this fucking game. I thought I knew, but then you threw me off with the pronoun. Mm-hmm. I know that was my plan. I'm an evil genius. <laughs> really sucks too because if you were lying about the pronoun, which you really could have been, I would have mm-hmm. known it all along. Then ten seconds. Oh dang! <laughs> I'll just go room Rhodes, four. but I think room I'm wrong. Three, room two, room one. It is not <laughs> Rhodes. Yes, I get the win. I'm the winner the, of this uh, game. The correct answer, believe it or not, is <laughs> Timmy. It's Timmy. <laughs> T- the Bible thumping Timmy. That's not true. <laughs> My high school English teacher. He hasn't been to high school. Uh, you lied. I feel, I feel right? like Rob, you need there's to. Not, there's not. <laughs> between all the, but between all those answers, like they're all wrong. None of them would work. A bunch of ants under his shoe, obviously. Oh come on, that's not Timmy. Okay. He was a nice kid. I don't accept this lose because you lied. You lied yeah, when, I when I Greg lie. said lie. you can't lie, and you lied. I'm going to say, in, in the game of best of three, actually, I feel like Laura got three out of three when only two was needed, so... Mm. Oh, okay, okay. I see how it works now. All right. Oh, but Yeah, good stuff, guys. It took me a while to come up with these random, I, you know, crazy... I bet it did. Jeez. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I ruined your game, Greg, with my anger. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't I don't like the lose. Your anger, which rubs off on me. Yeah, I know. I know, Laura. Have we talked in the past, Laura, that you're like, uh, aren't you one of those empaths or whatever it's called? Yep. You can like pick up on people's auras, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Laura. I'm sorry. I like yeah. feel angry on the inside right now. Can we call you aura? Oh, Laura? then did you picked up on all my anger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Rob, you straight lied. Why? Great. <laughs> I <did laughs> lie. I'm mad at you. Why aren't you like telling him like, dude, you lied. You're not allowed to do that. Didn't lie. Didn't lie. I have you, reasons. You, I have my you reasons. guys are yeah. You guys are free to choose whatever yeah, answer. See. It's called it's. See, it's, that called America, was, it's called America. Yeah. Hey, that was definitely. I see coming up with this game. That was definitely a bug in the system. I thought, <laughs> okay, so you know, it, Rob's, it, Rob's bullshit is the bug. <laughs> it's definitely in your guys' best interest to come up with the <laughs> hardest answer possible. But I thought, you know, like a good faith, uh, you know, rule. Just good faith. come up with. Yeah, not no, me. Who and, you're and guy, with, right? Wrong guy here. Wrong guy here. <laughs> my check behind that was to say if you guys didn't get it, it, your answers had to have lined up with mine, and mine definitely wouldn't have lined up with uh, with Bible Bible Thump and Timmy wanting to go to New Orleans. You know, he's underage. He's never been to high school. He doesn't know what the Bible is. <laughs> Yeah. Well, my so this my, sounds my like reason- a lot of good faith right no, here. My my reasoning of like he's a he's a smart kid. He got he's, they were talking about in the beginning of the movie. You got to put him in a good school. I'm pretty sure he's at high school because he's super smart. Um, and then you know his it seemed like his dad and mom were Bible thumpers. They want to go by the book, so he probably has a Bible. It doesn't mean he likes it. And he, he wants to, to go to Mardi Gras to see titties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't say titties. He probably likes gumbo. I think he likes gumbo. That's my that's my reasoning. There you go. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. <laughs> well, I thought I thought it was going to be a 15 minute game. I guess my calculations are a bit off. That's all right. Or maybe there's another rap in your future. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> now Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I'm sweating. All right. I'm sweating. <laughs> I am sweating. I started getting all nervous now. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my my adrenaline is all coming down because the anger is dissipating and now I'm getting real. I'm like, oh should I upset Laura? <laughs> now I'm in trouble. <laughs> Laura's like, keep them picks ringing, Rob. Keep them yeah, picks, picks yeah. ringing. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. No, but good, good. That was a great game, Greg. That, that was, was a great really idea. I'm sorry that right away when I got a wrong answer, I got super pissed and it just derailed the whole game. <laughs> But uh, I can't change who I am on the inside. I can't. I don't have another personality I can pull out. You know, <laughs> it's just an asshole. Um, <laughs> let's uh, but let's get into the movie now. Let's finally get into the movie here. Um, uh, let's uh, let's check into the motel. Let's check into the motel. So, like we say, we're doing identity this week, 2003 film. Laura, are you calming down? You calming down, Laura? You okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ca- I'm calming down, so I feel like you should feel my vibe and calm down too, right? Okay, all right. Okay. It's harder for me to get rid of it. <laughs> One more Long Island iced tea. <laughs> Fill it up. Oh, that's true. We should have had Lloyd out here help me out. Yeah, he should have been giving me a back rub. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is a 2003 film. Uh, writer of this movie. I just want to shout out shout out the writer because I feel like this movie is is written um, actually pretty well for everything to connect. So Michael, uh, I don't know if it's Coney or Cooney, is the writer of this movie. Uh, he actually wrote the screenplay, which I, I read was actually loosely adapted on Agatha Christie's 1939 uh, book, uh, and then there were none. So that's kind of like the loose base uh, from this is is from. Uh, director, you got James Mangold. Uh, he has, uh, he did Girl. <laughs> Wait, is a girl, is a girl interrupted? <laughs> there's a, there's a comma. He did, he did a girl? <laughs> What? <laughs> there's like there's a comma there but it's just girl interrupted right you got you got robbed with the teleprompter gag <laughs> i know what the hell laura did you did you know ahead of time i was gonna get angry and, and play the game so like i'm gonna fuck with this she did his, after the game was over she stuck that, stuck the comma Rob, it's called girl comma interrupted that's how you type it out really yes <laughs> it's not just a girl interrupted oh my goodness rob, no. rob goes he did girl <laughs> <laughs> it's like i'm ron burgundy <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's gonna have to stay in. I guess it's too funny to take out. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so James Mangold did "Girl," comma interrupted. Uh, he did "Walk the Line." He did "Logan," and he also is doing the new Indiana Jones movie coming out in 2022. So a really well, well, <laughs> Loris laughing. A uh, really good director. I like all his movies. Never saw "Girl," comma interrupted. Never saw that one. Oh, it's uh, so, so good. You should watch it. So good. Oh yeah. Girl. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, budget of this movie, $28 million. Box office was $90.2 million, So it made a good amount of money in the box office. Uh, Laura, you want to do interesting facts? Let's do it. Let me change the docket and write a bunch of inappropriate stuff in there. Okay. All right. Go for it. <laughs> he, did... <laughs> he did girl. <laughs> he did girl. <laughs> You sound like a, like an R R and B singer. I know, with, right? With a good yeah. setup there, it was like the <laughs> Rob. Like take take a swig of your water and then like like dab your head with your with your handkerchief. <laughs> handkerchief, <yeah>. girl. <laughs> it was like boys to men coming back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the odds of all ten characters having the same birthday are approximately one in a hundred and fifteen sextillion. Wow, that's super high <laughs> odds. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Greg? That's funny. I don't, I don't know. I just not every day you, you hear someone drop sex healing on you. I don't <laughs> oh, know why. It's a real word. <laughs> that sounds like a like a like a reptile orgy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thought maybe Rob edited the text in the yeah in the I docket. To I changed it to that. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! I don't know how I'm gonna get through this. Okay. Some location shooting occurred in Los Angeles County, but the majority of the movie was shot on an enormous soundstage at Sony Studios in Culver City, the same studio that once housed the set for the Emerald City in The Wizard of Oz. Hmm. Oh, that's wow. interesting. That's cool. I thought that was really hmm. cool. And here, Greg, you'll like this one. They used a heavy rain backdrop and a water system to simulate the cold rain. And as a result of working on such a water drenched set for long hours, most of the cast and crew all got really bad colds while filming this. Jeez, that wasn't real rain. No. At all? At, at, at any point. Doesn't Incredible. sound like it. Yeah. That's a lot of water shit. I know. Yeah. Uh, okay, Laura, you want to do cast? Yeah. Okay, so there's, there's a lot. Uh, John Cusack obviously plays Ed. I got to ask up front, what is your guys' favorite John Cusack movie? This one. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is. One? It is. Yeah. Um, man, was he in High Fidelity? Yeah. Right. Right. So I would say High Fidelity. Yeah. Yeah. That's mine. Yeah. Now we're on the same page, Laura. We're friends again. <laughs> v- virtual high five, Laura. Yeah. Virtual high five. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, we're back. Okay, all right. All right. Ray Liotta plays Rhodes, Amanda Peet as Paris, John Hawks as Larry, Clea Duvall as Ginny, our faculty alum. Super exciting. Yeah. Uh, William Lee Scott as Lou, Rebecca D. Mornay as Carolyn Suzanne, Layla Kenzel as Alice, John C. McGinley as George. Can you guys take him seriously at all after watching Scrubs? I mean, no, it's so mm-hmm. hard, right? Yeah. I mean, he kind of played like a goober in this. So like it wasn't that far off, but I it was like weird. I couldn't take him seriously. It's hard. It's hard. But he took himself seriously in this movie. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm-hmm. It is all odd. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, We have Brett Lauer. I don't know if I'm saying that right. As Timothy, Timmy, Jake, Boosie as Robert, Rhodes as inmate. <laughs> <laughs> Boosie? <laughs> that's worse than that's worse than girl that's worse than my boys to men uh, reference is that not right Come on. B- Busey like like Gary Busey it's Gary Busey's oh. son it's Jake Busey 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 what? yeah pussy yeah sure <laughs> that's not what I said <laughs> <laughs> Christ, Man, these Long Island, these Long Island, these these Long Island ICs are getting to us tonight. Oh my god! You right. guys. And last but not least, Pruitt Taylor Vince as Malcolm Rivers. Oh, Pruitt Taylor Vince sounds like a real serial killer name. Yeah, you know, like it's, it's true. Sound, it sounds like a real killer. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, okay, you want to keep talking, Laura? No. And do synopsis. Now? <laughs> Is there any buces or pussies or anything like that in the synopsis? <laughs> I don't want to do it. Make Greg do it tonight. I'm not doing the synopsis. <laughs> Unless you want me to like ramble on about every fucking scene oh, for about fuck. an hour. All right. Yeah. How do I come do on, Laura, synopsis come on. on this movie? Fuck. Pull it together, Laura. Pull it together. I am pulled together. Thank you. <laughs> All right. When this when identity begins, you are essentially watching two movies. We're watching a movie about 10 strangers who all check into a motel. They're all stuck at the same motel because of a bad storm with like an unknown killer taking them down one by one. But we're also watching another movie of this small trial of a mentally unwell inmate. Um, who was sentenced to death and they're basically having a last ditch trial to see if he should be executed or not. And as the movie progresses, uh, we learn how these two stories are connected and how all 10 strangers are him. Dang, spoilers. Oh, you did that a long time ago. <laughs> they're yeah, not know, real. True. They're just my personality. <laughs> <laughs> my anger didn't hold back spoilers. Yeah, it didn't work like that. No. My anger didn't give a shit what was going on at all. Yeah. Laura, your face in that impersonation was like my favorite thing of the night so far. I know. I know. Another visual nobody's ever going to get to see. Yeah. Good. Apparently, I look like the Tusk Walrus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, let's just start, you know, I actually want to start a little bit different than we normally start. I actually just want to get into like some first watch stories. Like the first time we saw this in theaters or wherever you watched that, because I, I feel like going through this review, it's going to be, I think, a different opinion first to maybe second to now uh, being so much time. Uh, so when do you guys want to start with like a first watch story, the first time you saw it and kind of what you thought of it? You don't need to get into a lot of the details, but just what was your first take of seeing this for the first time? What do you think, Greg? I saw it on DVD for the first time. Uh, I didn't even watch it in the theaters. I didn't, I don't even think I knew about the movie at the time. But, uh, basically by the end of the movie, the, the one thing that really grips you is all the twists. I mean, that's what we're, we're probably going to talk about this whole episode are all the different twists. I don't recall many movies that have had so many, not just the number of twists, but the effectiveness and the cleverness of them to the point to where I remember watching it the first time and kind of giving up trying to, to second guess yourself. I, I kept trying to go, oh, who's the killer? Who's the killer? But then they kept revealing so many different things throughout, so many different twists about each character and about everyone's backstory that I, I, I distinctly remember at one point being like, you know what? I'm not even going to guess anymore. Just just lay it on me what happens. And then by the time you get to the end, you go, oh, okay, I, I get it now. And then boom, they, they hit you with one last one. And that really threw me uh, into a loop. I was I was so impressed by this movie the first time around. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Laura? What about like the first time you saw it? We saw it in theaters. Um, we, yeah, really like this movie. I mean, it's all about the twists. Um, I think first watch. Yeah, I didn't get any of my guesses correct. Same as you, Greg. At, the, at that point, I was just like, dude, just tell me because 
fuck. Like, I can't guess this movie at all. The same as my game, my game performance tonight. I couldn't get any of the guesses right, yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, without getting too much into it, I would say that the thing about this movie is, is if you are someone who, you know, kind of gets annoyed if there's too many twists, or things are flipping back and forth. I actually would agree. I, I tend to not like that. But for some reason in this movie, I love it. It works. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm kind of the same as you, Laura. I think I was around whatever early 20s or something like that when this came out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure I saw it in theater, too, because I did like John Cusack as an actor. And I feel like I was watching almost everything he did in that time. This is John Cusack. I want to say it is highest uh probably you know when he's doing all his movies every year and stuff like that mm -hmm. um but same thing as you like I, I loved all the twists i don't know if i'd ever seen anything like this the way it played out the way just almost every character was suspicious yeah. you know and the way they made it it work like that uh, was really cool so i i liked it i mean like i said i was a young buck a 20 year old kid i don't know if i was that wise back then but uh Definitely different than watching it now as a 40 year old man, <laughs> like reviewing movies kind of on a podcast weekly basis. You know, we I, we always say that we dig a little deeper into these movies since we started doing this podcast. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I definitely think I have a different opinion uh, first time watching to now, uh, which I was surprised about. You know, I think I was the one last week when Greg said he's watching Identity. I was like, oh, dude, like. I love this movie. This might be a perfect movie to me. And now I'm like, mm, maybe not. I don't know. You said that a few times. Yeah. You're like, I this know, is going to be a five. Yeah. And that's just like my memory of like my feeling of this movie, you know, of like that watching that experience of watching it, mm. you know, not digging deep into it, just watching it straight through and like that feel, you know, so uh, we'll see. We'll see. If we get into it a little bit more. But uh, uh, let's just talk about now, like the opening setup vibe of this movie kind of establishing you know all the characters they're all arriving at a motel um and just kind of like who they are a bit uh before some of the twists start happening so what do you guys like about the opening of this movie i think it starts very interesting whether it is the motel stuff or it's the trial stuff uh what do, what do you think about it greg i thought it was very reminiscent of seven where you see a lot of, you know, the pan, the, the camera's panning over a table and you're looking at scraps of paper and notes, gibberish, stuff that you clearly will have no idea what it means. But later on down the road, you understand the significance. <clears throat> and actually, the second time that I watched it, well, I, I watched it one and a half times, I specifically looked over the intro and a lot of those notes made a lot of sense. And I thought it was pretty cool. First of all, it starts off with that very compelling quote. I don't know if they actually made it up in this movie or if it was from, from somewhere to where he says, as I was going up the stairs, I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. I wish, I wish he'd go away. It, it, it's so generic and vague yet compelling and mysterious that it, that's really what sets the tone for the whole movie. Yeah. The idea of, you know, what does it even mean to exist? That, I mean, that's kind of a big theme in this movie. You see, uh, John Cusack has a book in his car. Um, it's, it's, it's a book on ontology and it, that kind of gives you a sense of, well, this movie is actually talking. It, they reference the, the theme of identity all the way through. And I just, I love the opening. It's, it's great because it's mysterious. You don't know what's going on and definitely setting up the, uh, the legal court before you get into a lot of the, the, the motel drama is a really smart way of, of, you know, calling it back when you do get back to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Laura? What do you think like the opening setup vibe? Oh, yeah. I loved it. I mean, we got to talk about the rain, the heavy rain. Already Greg and I are oh, in. So great. And I mean, this movie probably has more <laughs> rain than any movie I've ever seen. It is oh, like rain true. on, steroids yeah it's yeah it's like 90 percent of the it's movie it's insane yeah. it's great maybe a hundred maybe a hundred is actually raining in the courtroom scenes outside so maybe a yeah. hundred percent that's true yeah by the way something about rain just to me it just makes you feel closer to the moment because you can hear what's going on there was that that small little scene where uh where ed he, he you know bends down to pick up that little piece of the shower curtain in the mud in the rain and he looks at it and then you can see the water droplets falling all over him i mean it's just there, there's something about it when you can just feel you feel like you're there that's why i love the uh the stormy you know the vibe so much in these movies yes yeah, so I really like that. Uh, no, no, that was not. I like rain. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there. No, no, it's okay. Um, you know what I loved about this intro is how we meet all of the 10 
characters who are checking into the motel and kind of how they get there. It reminds me so much of Clue. Mm, and mm-hmm. I oh, just yeah. love mm. that. You know, I mean, we talk a lot about if certain movies bring up like a memory or an experience, it doesn't matter if it worked or not. You're just going to dig it. And I feel like that's kind of how I felt about this intro. It just reminded me so much of Clue, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Clue was based on the Agatha Christie book. Like I I read like I've never, of course, even heard of that book until now. And I read like what that book's about. And it actually sounds more like Clue than it does this movie. Mm. So I wouldn't be surprised if that has a lot of inspiration. Um, Do you have anything else, Laura? Is that that just Clue Clue and Rain? Okay, nice, nice. Um. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I I like the. I I have one of these hanging on you soon. (laughs) Oh no! no. Oh wow! Oh no! Laura has room. She had that ready to go. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) It does. It's scary. Laura's scary. It's gonna pop out of my mouth. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Uh, but yeah, I like the opening in this movie too. I mean, I mean, any movie that gives me a Foo Fighters song in the first 10 minutes, I'm pretty <laughs> on board. I mean, especially that might be one of my favorite Foo Fighters songs of all time. Foo Fighters might be one of my favorite bands of all time, but, uh, we have more in common. This is not good. <laughs> But uh, I like uh, I actually like the hard cuts in the beginning of this movie to start. I like the when they're introducing all the characters, you know, the way like a character come up, say something and it would hard cut to a connection to what happened with that character. I thought that was really interesting, you know, as a director, as like shooting it as an editor. I thought that was actually pretty cool. And then all the introductions of the characters I thought are interesting. The whole like, you know, uh, courtroom stuff is it's it, it's it does what it's supposed to do, especially like the opening crawl, like Greg talked about of just showing all the fucked up things. And I thought it was actually really interesting was because I, I think I watched this movie twice uh, these past two days, but I, I feel like the second time watching, I kind of noticed that in the opening credits when the doctor is asking Malcolm questions, I believe each question he asks, each answer is from a different personality. You know what I mean? Like if you pay attention to the answers and the way he's answering them they seem like it's a different type of person that is answered especially mm. one is in some type of different language i don't know if it was latin or spanish or something it like was that spanish yeah he asks what is the what is the meaning of life yeah i still don't know what personality that was or if there's uh, more personalities that we don't even know about but i feel like no, nobody in this no that's a callback to, to to ed scene where he, he was talking about uh trying to talk the the jumper off the oh, bridge nice. and and she asked what is the meaning of life and he paused for that split second because he's a jaded police officer that has seen so much shit on the beat that before he could come up with his canned response, she jumped. That's so cool. And that's so cool. That's that's, that's great. And I'm glad they all actually connect. Uh, but the opening of this movie is super solid, super solid opening. Uh, yeah. It gives you what you want. It gives enough suspense to be like, wait, what's happening now? Um, but what do you, let's get into characters acting now. You can get into a little bit of the, you know, two thirds of this movie uh, bits. What do you guys think of the characters, the acting overall? If you want to spot out anybody, this is where some of my negatives start a little bit now. Uh, what, do, what do you think, Greg? I mean, it's it's pretty easy to call out the best ones. I, I don't know if you guys will agree, but for me, John Cusack is Ed. He He's just he's so great. I mean, his, his delivery is very natural. And, you know, the way that he goes from scene to scene, there's something very subtle about his movements and his looks and the way that he delivers his lines. That's just done so well. Um, to me, he and uh, Amanda Pete Ray Liotta really had like the most compelling um, characters. <laughs> Can we not now pronounce names tonight? <laughs> Liotta. Ray Li- Liotta? <laughs> Leota, Leota, what is wrong with us tonight? I feel like we need to ban Long Island Ice Teas from future podcasts because <laughs> we cannot pronounce uh, names tonight. Oh my I'll, god! I'll tell you, I just want to call it one, one other one, and um, it's uh, John Hulk's. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Well, you put a lot of L's in the middle there. I I, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Sorry, John Hawks. Oh, okay, the, the, I was trying to do the AA Ron thing. All right, so, so John Hawks. He plays Larry. I think he's such he's such a great actor. He's the guy that I'm dressed as tonight. Um, I really like him, especially from his small little piece in in Blue Streak, which is one of my favorite comedies. I think he's great. He has a couple of scenes in this movie where he, his his reaction to things is is so great. Like when they try to pin one of the murders on him and he sees the the scene for the first time with the baseball bat and his shock and awe was so spot on. I mean, I, I agree with you. I agree with you there. What, what do you think, Laura, acting wise? Do you want to spot out any positive negatives? Yeah, I agree. John Cusack was amazing. I think Amanda Peet was pretty solid for most of it. Honestly, I think they all did what they were meant to do. And for me, 
even though some of it was like overacting at times, mm -hmm. it didn't bother me in this movie. Really? And I think it's just because, I mean, once you know that they just represent a personality, doesn't that kind of all go out the window a little it, bit? It, it kind of does. I think so. Because it's really coming from the mind of one person. And it's like, right. it's like if you were to ask me to write personalities, I'm going to give you the most wild, vivid, unrealistic characters that ever existed because it's coming from me and my experiences and what I know, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, but see, the problem is, is that realization kind of comes a little bit too late to where I think maybe a lot of people have written off a lot of these uh, characters to where they are very overacted in some ways. They kind of paint themselves into corner. Like the douchey guy is way too douchey. The, <laughs> the emotional girl is way too emotional. The serial killer guy looking is, is way too serial killish. <laughs> But I mean, oh, again, no way. he's hilarious. <laughs> Jake Boussey, Boussier, <laughs> Boussey. <laughs> I mean, like they just took him right out of contact. He was in that kind of the same character. And I mean, but but the thing is, is when you when you do realize that they are just figments of one guy's imagination, you kind of have to give it a pass, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely did not give it a pass and I don't think I'm going to give uh -oh. it a pass. I mean, for me, like yeah, John Cusack is solid. He's solid in everything he does. Ray Liotta is really good in this movie for playing kind of like a dual character where you think he's a cop and he kind of comes off as a cop. And then when you realize he's not a cop, like, you know, like that, that, that battle internally of him probably thinking like, what would a cop say? What would a yes. cop do? And I thought that he played that really well. Um, but beyond that, to be honest with you guys, honestly, almost everybody else kind of annoyed me this time watching, especially the, the young teenage couple, Lou and what the hell was her name? Jenny. 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 Oh my God. Every scene with them, I was just like, wow, this is horrible. Whether it was their dialogue, their delivery, like the lines, the one scene where I was just like, wow, this scene is really shitty is the scene where the, the Jake Boussier guy shows up and, uh, <laughs> His name is getting worse now. Uh, he shows up and, and it's her and him and her and the boyfriend and, and the thing. And she's like, did you feel that? And he's like, what? And she's like, cold. And I'm just like, oh, like, like the delivery I thought was bad. The line I thought was bad. I'm like, you guys should have had a rewrite. To me, that was a horrible scene. You know, just trying to really like put that stamp on like this guy's dangerous. I was like, oh, come on. You know, and I don't think I would have thought that fucking when I watched this movie every other year before this, but delving deep into this, what I'm talking about delving deep into this movie, really analyzing it, shit like that kind of bugged me where I'm like, that was not a great scene. You know, Larry, I thought was pretty good. Like you said, Greg, I thought he was pretty solid, overacted here and there, but it didn't bother me that much. Yeah. Um, Like we said, the guy from Scrubs, I really just couldn't take him that seriously to begin with. So like a lot of the other characters, I do like Jake Boussier. I do like him a lot. <laughs> He's Canadian now. I do. <laughs> is Boussie why? <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually like him in almost everything. I mean, I mean, I love the movie Frighteners. I hope we review it one day. I love him in that movie. So like he didn't bother me, but he actually didn't do anything in the movie other than look creepy. He had like three lines, so I really couldn't bitch on him, but Everybody else I was kind of irritated at, you know, uh, I'm sorry. It's crazy. I'm the only one, but, uh, you know, sorry. I didn't, uh, what is it? I didn't watch a uh, clue right before this, Laura. So I didn't have that <laughs> love going in, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think they were clearly overacted, but it just, I don't know. It didn't bother me at all. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. You know, to each, to each their own, you know, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about like the twists and turns now. Let's get into like the craziness of reveals Jeez. and, you know, I mean, I mean, to me, like one of the coolest things, not talking about big reveals, but just like the first thing you get after you really meet the characters in the hotel, you finally have kind of settled from the car crash and these people showing up. And then you get like this suspenseful music that kind of comes in. And then they literally go through every character and kind of show you a, like a little bit of like, they're darker than you thought, mm -hmm. yeah. whether I it's, whether it's, moment. whether it's Amanda Pete, like has money in a briefcase or fucking Jake Bussier is fucking un <laughs> undoing the toilet. Oh. <laughs> Girl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's like undoing the pipe. You have my, my favorite one is like Ray Liotta. They show the back of his shirt and it's all yeah. bloody with a hole and so like they're showing everybody has like maybe a, an agenda of something they're hiding to me that's a such a great setup you know i really like that what would you guys want to point out any twist or turn or jump on that yeah just on that one I, that was so great it was like this uh, i don't know maybe a, a minute montage of going back from room to room you see john cusack popping pills you don't know what that's about 
the hotel owner, he's sort of frantically putting things away in the drawer. There's a picture frame. I mean, it didn't really make sense, but the fact that everyone's got this mysterious dark side, uh, it, it, it definitely did feel like clue. Like there's something that you know about each person that they're keeping from everybody else. Yeah, right. yeah. What about you, Laura? What do you think? I feel like to go into twists and turns, you got to just do it. You know, pull the bandaid off. Yeah, for me, this movie is just how many there were and the crazy journey it takes you on. I mean, it's one thing to watch a whodunit movie. Who done it, right? I mean, we think it's the inmate the whole time for, for the most part. Then we're kind of like, is it Larry? Oh my God, I don't know. Is it Larry? And then we're like, oh shit, Rhodes isn't a real cop. Is it him? Mm -hmm. To go through that, to then have the huge reveal that these are all made up personalities in a man's mind who has like the multiple personality disorder was fucking huge. But then on top of that, they add a layer where you're getting this experimental drug at the moment that is more or less removing these extra personalities and you will be left with one. But we need to make sure that the personality that led you to kill the killer is gone, is one of the ones that's gone. So now we're back to the same story, knowing they're all fake. And we're still like, we still need to know who the killer is because we need to make it, sure. Yeah. yeah, we need to make sure that that one is gone. So those twists were insane. Uh, yeah, and I don't know if I'm allowed to, there, there's a whole twist at the end too, but <laughs> it, it's just like, I, can you guys spot out other movies that have that many twists that worked? Not really. Yeah, not in that, exactly. not in that quantity. And it wasn't all just about the people, too. There was the first one to me that I picked up was when uh, Robert escapes, right? He gets out of the car and he, and he, or, you know, he gets out of the bathroom and he leaves and he just tries to, to bolt off the property and he sees lights off in the distance and oh, maybe a couple yeah. of buildings and he runs over there, still handcuffed or whatnot. And somehow it's the same, ho same motel right. and, and the same people. And that is very Twilight Zone ish, lost ish. Yeah. So I thought that was so cool. And, and that was before you learned anything about some of these characters, uh, you know, backgrounds that they were hiding from everybody. Um, another cool one was when we see the, there was a frozen body in the freezer that pops mm -hmm. out. And then we learned that the guy who's been handing out keys the entire time, Larry, <laughs> and taking everyone's money and telling them where to go find the amenities around the hotel, you know, the motel. He's not even the manager. He just stumbled across the actual manager who was dead and just took over his spot and started taking everyone's money. I thought yep. that was when, you know, you feel like, okay, I'm in for a ride now. And they started going into, you know, the same birthdays and everyone's names were named after states. And you just, you knew that something was up way beyond what you are currently able to comprehend at the moment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For me, like leading all up to this stuff, you really, you really believe it's real, you know, even before the whole reveal of, you know, he's a psychiatric and it's all in his head and personalities. Like you said, you had the Jake BC one where he kind of comes back to the same motel. So you're kind of like, like, wait a second what the fuck's going on and then i think for me up to that point you have the whole keys you know every time somebody dies in this mm, movie yeah. there's a key found on them and it's counting down from 10 to 1 and you're kind of still on track with that thinking like okay it's still a killer he's planting the keys until you get to the the what is it the the wife or the mom that gets hit in the road when when her key shows up like under the bed cushion when she dies that's the first one where you're like wait a second like how did that get here? And even John yeah. Cusack is like, that's impossible. And that's, you know what I mean? So up to that point, you're still kind of thinking like, all right, it's a real killer. You know, it's still a whodunit, but it's a real killer. And when you see those two things, you're like, wait, this is like a weird, something else is going on here. Yeah, and because were, you think that the, the killer is planting the keys after he kills each person. It's an immediate act. Like, you know, you see a lot of uh, serial killers go back, I guess, and they leave their calling card or whatever, right? But he couldn't what's have... Your <laughs> I just leave. I just throw hot sauce packets everywhere, and you know, hot sauce packets on the scene, scene of the crime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually do believe that shit. You know, that's that's way too quick. Too. That's way too quick of an answer to not be true. <laughs> oh, the hot, hot, hot sauce, hot, hot sauce strangler. Yeah. <laughs> Oh shit. Uh, um, oh shit. What was I going to say? 
<laughs> oh yeah. Well, what, what what I was saying is with the, with Alice's particular death, it was based on you know you, you, nobody could have predicted when she was going to pass away from quote unquote natural causes. You know, after being injured. So when it showed up with that timing, then you thought, oh, what is happening? You're, you're absolutely- yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're not going to get into Rotten Tomatoes yet. You know, we'll talk about that later on. But like one of the big negatives of this movie is the fact that they reveal the identity like half. It's like halfway through the movie. Would you guys say halfway through the movie? Maybe a little bit after that, you know, maybe, you know. Oh, that didn't feel like it was that felt like closer toward the end for me, didn't it? It felt in the middle for you guys. I mean, yeah, not exactly the middle, but, you know, maybe three fourths. You know, it's not exactly the, the everybody was saying like that should be the end twist, not oh. like a separate twist, because really people are saying once you reveal that it's almost like nothing's kind of matters. Like p- these people aren't real anyway. So who gives a shit? That's what a lot of the mm. negatives of this movie are that says that I just wanted to point that out. I don't really feel that. I mean, we'll get to the ending aside and if it works or not, but, uh, you know, that's just something people shout out as, as the story works. Cause I think it's amazing the way that this was written, the way mm-hmm. that the connections work. Like we talked about, like coherence last week, like just plotting out all the connections and how they work and structurally. That's amazing as far as the writer goes. That's why I wanted to shout him out in the beginning of the writer of this movie, because I think it's very genius the way it works. Um, Okay, let's get into like one of the biggest things I actually do want to talk about is like, who does everybody in this identity represent? I mean, to me, to me, it's one of the most interesting things to think about once you've seen this movie, once you understand that all these identities he has and, you know, they, uh, they were established when he was young. Uh, you know, his mother was a, was a, you know, lady of the night and, uh, she, <laughs> and she, what Laura, I think you said that's appropriate. I thought you said I could say that now. Come on. You can say, yeah, I don't know. Just you don't know anymore. You yeah. Know? Okay. Just forget <laughs> it. Okay. All right. All right. I'm <laughs> leaked guys. I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and she would just leave her nine year old son or I guess up to maybe who knows when this started, you know, just by himself as she was, you know, doing her stuff. And, you know, he kind of developed these personalities to kind of cope with what he was experiencing in his life. Um, So everybody, it seems like some of the people obviously represent certain things in his identity and the break and. Uh, but I just kind of want to know what you guys think. Let's just kind of spitball this out. I don't know if we're going to be able to solve the problem, solve the solution here, but uh, I actually just want to talk about it a little bit. Uh, so when do you guys want to throw somebody out and say what your theory might be? Well, I, you know, I do kind of want to start to say that I don't even know that every character represents a part of him. Uh, let me try to word this better. So I, I think some characters, yes, like I think Rhodes is like his deception or his manipulative side. So those characters, I do think have like a personality trait that makes up Malcolm. But I also think some of the characters represent other people in his life and how they've shaped him. And I actually think that both Alice and Paris represent part of his real mom that's what i think too yeah yeah so like amanda pete is obviously the sex worker um i still think that that's bullshit they put a leather jacket on her and put her in a decently sized skirt and they're like haha you're a hooker now that really didn't sit well with me <laughs> yeah you have uh, you have uh, to me like i mean this movie is 2003 whenever it came out right i mean it was a different time back then, you know. I mean, geez, Larry in the beginning of this movie, like, oh, get out of here, whore yeah. and slut. And I was, I was like what uncomfortable watching it. It just felt yes. like, it felt so weird. Like, I get it. Like, that's his character, you know. Later it was on, so I, uncomfortable to me that I, I could have sworn that they had a connection, that he knew her somehow. Right. Mm. Like, she'd gone to the motel before. Or yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. I kept waiting for that <laughs> moment to happen because. Don't I, laugh. I thought he was going to go, oh, yeah, because she used to come up here all the time. And that's yeah. why. But mm. it never didn't. And then it makes you realize he was just, you know, generalizing her right out the gates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is and, weird. So anyway, so but but yes, I do think Amanda Pete's character, Paris and Alice are both his mom. Like, obviously, Paris is the profession she had. And that clearly made a very lasting impression on him. And then from what we know of Alice, she seems like a very like nurturing, warm, kind of like the best mom scenario, which is what he may have felt with her sometimes, but needed. Or or his or his like ideal mom, what he would think in his head of like, this is my ideal mom, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually explains if you look at deeply into that connection, I think that that explains the ending really well. (laughs) 
<laughs> but we're not there yet. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I was like, wow, I don't even know where we're going with that. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think, I honestly think most of the females in this movie represent some form of his mother and something he's experienced through that nine years of life. You know, whether it was, uh, what is her name? Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. And, you know, even Jenny and the guy, because I kind of like wrote this thing because I was I was interested to figure this out. So what I did was what the second time I watched this, I documented the order characters arrived in the beginning of this movie. And I started thinking, like, I wonder if and I'm not sure about this. I haven't went down a Reddit hole yet, but I wonder if the characters are introduced in the order they were created in his mind. I mean, as deep as this movie and as many connections, I think it would be interesting if the writer actually did it that way. So for me, like the way I kind of said that is the first person you see is Larry in this movie. He's he's at the motel. He's watching it and this and that. You know, you find out later on that he took over from the hotel owner. He put him in the freezer. Uh, you know, one theory I had is that the guy in the freezer is actually Malcolm's original identity. Mm. And he literally killed it and took it over. You know, so that's why it's in the freezer because it's gone. Like the original identity is dead. He's only 10 identities now. That's it. Mm. So that's why Larry would be the first person you see is because he's the first identity that was created to take over from the original identity. By the way, that makes sense because look at Larry's character. He's very frantic in him. It's, it feels like Larry sees himself as a fraud like he doesn't first of all he yeah. doesn't know what's going on he he's not who he claims to be and ultimately he's scared at what's going on and i feel like that's the actual that's malcolm you know yeah. you know he has all of these different personalities and maybe yeah like you said he killed his original self and now the one that has taken over has no idea how to actually manage you know this uh maybe the motel is like his mind right he doesn't know how to manage all of these people check in and out yeah, I mean, you also have Larry, we already said, hates the prostitute, hates what she does. I mean, clearly, if that's your first identity, which was created because your mom is doing this and neglecting you, you would be pissed off and angry. You would hate that profession, hate those type of people right away. Mm. Um, so the next one you see is George and Alice. To me, that would be his ideal mother and father. So, right, you know what I mean? That would be the next identity he creates to cope with being a child. You know, having a mother and father. And I know George is not his biological father in the story. We'll get into that a little later on, I think, for me. Um, and then, of course, you have Paris show up, which, like Laura, me and Laura kind of said, is like a little bit of his actual mother. You know, almost like wishing she was a little bit of a better person. She has a whole thing with wanting to, you know, pick oranges and this and that. And maybe yeah. that's a little bit she of... She wants hey, a better he, life. Yeah. yeah. And maybe that's a little bit of Malcolm. Like, you know, as much as his mom treated him like garbage as a child he still loves her and he can't stop that and he still wants her to be happy um after that you have ed show up with carolyn i think to me ed is like his protector you know he's the protector he's the one that's there to be there he may probably created him at that point to protect him from outside forces the, the, when he gets into carolyn now like i honestly don't know what the hell carolyn represents like, uh, you know, I, I think I read something online. Somebody said she might be another form of the mother, you know, that would either, either, you know, wanting certain things in her life or whining about what she didn't have or something like that. I don't exactly know that, you know. Um, and then you have Ginny and Lou, of course, show up, I think, is another form of his mother and actual father's relationship when he was growing up before his father left. Mm -hmm. You know, very, you know, very, what do you want to call it, you know. Um, not a great relationship, arguing with each other, stuff like that, and maybe why the father ended up leaving, you know? Um, and then, of course, you have uh, Rhodes. You have Rhodes show up, and then the actual, you know, the guy you think, you know, Boussier shows up as the murderer, you think. Um, you know, like and, and like Greg said, I think Rose is somebody that's actually trying to hide who he is. Whether this is later in, in Malcolm's life when he became more of a delinquent, he was doing maybe crimes here and there or something like that, and he had to create this guy to either tell himself he's a better person or he's actually just like a bad person inside. And then for me, one of the interesting things is Robert. When Robert shows up, the actual criminal guy, there's one scene where um, where the Scrubs guy is talking to to Ed, and he's saying, you know, like, oh yeah, his father was, you know, was abusive, and this and then he left him. And then it cuts to Jake Busey walking across the everything, and the kids looking at him. To me, I think he clearly represents his father, his actual father, abusive, some type of criminal. So I think everybody represents something, and I and I really think the order that they are established might be the order in which his identities were created i mean what do you guys think about all that sounds pretty solid to me 
Yeah. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Solved it. Thank you. Thank you. You did yeah. the work. Good job. I did, I did the work. I did the work. Yeah. I know uh, Grob would be happy with me right now. Yeah. I definitely think a lot of the characters, the males, male and female characters represent, I mean, you guys already kind of talked about it, like the different versions maybe of his parents. Like you said, George and Alice, they're super kind and gentle and loving. Maybe he wanted his parents to be that way or... Yeah, Ginny and Lou, they're always arguing. Maybe that, that was them at some point. Um, to You know, you said Ed was kind of like the hero. I, I kind of think of Ed and Paris as a more realistic version of, of the type mm -hmm. of parents that he could have. Like, so people who have seen rough times, but, you know, they don't let that get in the way of treating others right. That's kind of like, you know, you don't want parents that are too lovey-dovey, you know, or too nice and too soft, yet you don't want the ones that are too, you know, you, I think he looks at Ed and Paris as like realistic versions of the ideal parent. You know, um, Ed, again, yeah, like he's, we talked about it, he was a former LAPD officer. He's kind of gruff, but then at the same time, he's still responsible and, and a leader and takes care of people. Paris, again, probably another manifestation. It kind of re reminds him of his mother, who was probably a, a prostitute. I think they talked about that early on. Um, or I'm sorry, sex worker. Um, but they both seem like good people. And I feel like, yeah, maybe they are the heroes because he wants them to defeat all of the other versions of his parents that are unsuitable for, for his mind and, and, you know, and for his mental state. Yeah, yeah, because I thought I thought it's really interesting too of like the fact that you know they document that he was nine years old when I guess you know the the state found him abandoned and I think his mother had been killed and this and that and then it, he doesn't commit the actual killings they talk about until he's thirty five years old so there's a big gap there of time when. I mean, they don't really say, like, were all these identities created when he was nine? Did they progressively create through these, like, 13, 15 years of his life? They don't really say that. So it's just interesting because I was trying to figure that out in the beginning of this movie. I was like, wait, when did he, when did he, like, start these identities? You know, were they all there in the beginning? When did he commit the crime? And there's, like, a time frame there where they don't really tell you. Uh, and I just think that's very interesting, not getting the answers there. What, what do you think, Laura? You're bobbing your head around. Yeah, I mean, I just think that none of these are things that were explained or even yeah. hinted at. So there's really no way of knowing. Mm -hmm. um, but I just have to add, like, I, I also think that a lot of these characters, they embody like one type of personality. Mm -hmm. And uh, I agree, like it, it almost makes it easier for him to pick a personality to be killing off these other personalities because he hates that part of himself. Yes. So like mm. the inmate, he's fucking crazy, like real Looney Tunes, you know? And I think that that, yeah, so he was one of the first, one of the first few to die. Um, he doesn't like that part of himself. Like, oh, I, I'm crazy. That's another part of me. And kind of funny, but I feel like with George, he's the quote unquote stepfather of Timmy. He, a big part of him is that he just ran, he's very Magoo. That's yeah. the best word to describe <laughs> yeah. him. And he just like shouts these random facts and he's super awkward. And those things don't bother us, obviously, but I also feel like that's, that's probably another few traits that Malcolm has and it really bothers him. He doesn't like those traits about himself. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I was seeing a few of those characters. But yeah, I mean, you can't, uh, or at least I cannot have that same theory with all of these 10 people. It's either like some form of the parent, some form of himself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or a personality that was completely right. created to deal with something that he's dealing with. And it actually has nothing to do with a parental figure or a part of himself that he, you know, like was born with. So it's it's really fascinating. I, I, I definitely talked about how I wanted us to get into this conversation because I think it's really interesting. But yeah, I mean, I bet if we had a sit down with the writer, it would just be <laughs> like, it's totally up to your yeah. interpretation mm -hmm. at this point. You know, there really is no no right answer. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. It's just it's just like a fun thing to talk about. Try to like analyze it. Like, how the fuck does this work? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. not not, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, let's uh, let's get to the fucking the end now. Let's get to the big twist. Let's get to whether you want to say the hospital twist a little bit or the end end twist, whatever you want to get into. I mean, one of one of my favorite scenes in this movie is the the identity twist, I guess, you know, when when uh, they're interviewing Malcolm and John Cusack, like, you know, is sitting in the chair and 
you know, that's when like the judge is like, wait, you don't know who you are and, and this and that. And they give John Cusack the mirror and it's Malcolm's oh. face. And um, that's just such a well acted scene by John Cusack of like his his like fear, anger, like, you know, uh, you know, just not knowing what's happening, all done with like his facial expressions. I really love that scene. Um, it is it is like a big twist, but uh, that to me is one of the coolest things. Uh, do you guys want to spot out any of that twist or just get to the ending? It's the best one. And also the acting by the actor who plays Malcolm. Incredible. Like yeah. the way he'll look at his reflection in the window because it's nighttime, it's dark, yeah. it's raining outside. And just it, it's almost like the mirror. I almost felt that. The acting was so well done that I felt that as he looked in the mirror and he was in denial. Yeah. But then for some reason, looking into the reflection in the window and seeing that same unknown face, it's almost like he, he was like, well, the mirror was lying, but like, oh, fuck, that yeah. really is me in <laughs> yeah. the window reflection, you know? Yeah. I, I just thought that was incredible. Yeah. That was my favorite twist for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about you, Greg? Did you want to spot out any other twists? Or I mean, we really didn't even go over all the deaths, you know. Like, I don't, I don't know if we yeah. need to. I mean, they're kind of here and there, and it, really, the ending. You could really talk about it with the ending, really, if you, you know, if you think about it. What about you, Greg? Yeah, I just want to point out that when I first saw this movie, I, as much as they dropped so many hints about there being multiple identities, um, Robert's character seeing the same motel after he walked off the property. A lot of people probably should have figured out, but I remember having no idea. I think one of the things that was so convincing was you're watching two different stories that could feasibly be the same story. I mean, it's raining in both. Mm -hmm. You're talking about, it almost seemed like when they were, you know, they're interviewing Malcolm because they are claiming that he committed uh, six murders. So I always, I remember thinking that, oh, we're watching the story of these six murders happening. And then we're just flashing back to, you know, at least him admitting to it or something. And it, this scene like tripped me up so much because I realized, oh, the, there, you know, these actual, what's happening at the motel is actually not happening. Um, and I know that you, we, you guys were saying that it wasn't really toward the end. It was sort of like middle end and it was kind of early that they revealed it, but. You know, one reason why I still felt invested in it was because of the the ultimatum. So, of course, Malcolm is going to be put to death. He's on death row unless they can convince the judge that the killer is gone because he's yep. he's trying to do the insanity plea. It's, it's a rare thing that maybe once a year, once every two years, some court case is able to to get someone not freed. But instead of being put to death, they put him in some type of institution. Right. So this is, I think, supposed to represent one of those cases. And so the idea is his psychologist is telling him, well, he's calling, almost talking to Ed, Edward, because Ed's the person that's coming forth in the moment. And he yells at him, Edward, the killer cannot survive. And then he kind of succumbs and he goes back into the darkness, back into Malcolm's mind. So to mm -hmm. me, I know it wasn't like the, the very last reveal, but I thought, oh, shoot, Ed's got a mission. He's got to find the killer. So it was kind of like that that jump started the story for me. I, I felt like, oh, not only do they have to survive because they have to not get killed. That's the whole point of the movie. But he actually has to eliminate the killer so that, uh, you know, he can't be the last one that's left in Malcolm's psyche. So I actually it was really cool. I thought this was a boost in the movie for me yeah yeah okay all right let's uh let's get to the ending this is most people that don't like this movies i think a lot of the hatred is the actual end end of this movie uh laura do you want to set up the end and kind of get us to it and then uh, you can talk about it uh so ed kills Rhodes, and at this point we only have one character left so we think we have amanda pete's character paris because everyone else has been taken out and received that key countdown. And so obviously Paris is not the killer. You know, that's not her personality. And so now we're like, okay, this all worked. The experimental drug worked. He has gotten rid of all of these extra personalities. Um, he was able to convince the court with his doctor that uh, and the judge that he is clinically insane. And that was not him in his right mind. That was one of his personalities who did the killing. Therefore, he is better off being just institutionalized via a hospital. Uh, so he, you know, he's driving along with his doctor and a driver and he's 
we're, we're having these beautiful visions of Paris driving into her new orange grove and he's singing a little tune and it's going to her singing it and he's singing it and we're thinking this is so great. And then she's going out and she's about to, what did she call it? Prune the, well, I forget what she called it. <laughs> oh, fuck it. I mean, it's, this is not important. It's just really bothering me. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so there she is in the soil. And all of a sudden, little Timmy shows up with a giant rake and kills her. And we're like, wait a second, didn't Timmy die in the car explosion with Ginny? Guess not. And then we see a beautiful little montage of how he was involved with killing off all of these other personalities. And that is his killer personality. And unfortunately, that is now his last personality left. Mm -hmm. So he is, therefore, Malcolm the killer now. After they've decided to take him off death row. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so his doctor sees him struggling in the backseat of this truck and opens up the little little protective window and boom, Malcolm kills again. Yeah. yeah. Cut to uh, black. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, the montage is, is cool. You know what I mean? Showing you like what you didn't see in all these murders, different mm -hmm. angles, different things i think uh i think the first one you have is the the mom who dies in the street Tim timmy is like playing a game with her so clearly he knew the car was coming mm -hmm. uh you have later on you know she didn't die he like you know suffocates her in the bed mm -hmm. you have the one with the truck and his stepdad or he like you know draws him out to get hit by the truck you have the car to me the one that's actually the most ridiculous is the one with the, the girl in the car the car blows up and he's like walking away like it's a diehard movie or something like that <laughs> like that was the only yeah, one yeah. that's the only one where i'm like like oh like that come on that shot was kind of fucking ridiculous you know um greg what do you think about the endings do you want to spot out any of his other murders i i don't remember all of them but i think what's cool is it, it creates replay value in, in watching yeah. it watching it for the first time you know as part of this review yeah. i was so paying attention to him in every single moment and keep i was like mentally keeping track of him even when he wasn't in the scene thinking oh he could he could be there hmm. he could be there and then when he does enter each scene or re-enter a scene, you go, oh, he just came back from, you know, murdering somebody or setting up a, a murder. And I thought it's just, it's super clever. Yeah, I mean, there's there's one scene, like, a, I guess I'm just like the negative one on this episode tonight, but there's one scene that's very uh, original Halloween-ish when, you know, little Mikey Myers is supposed to be the killer, but the cameraman is clearly like six feet tall when he's filming a scene. There's one scene at the beginning, I know it's to throw you off, but... I mean, Timmy is like three feet tall or something like that. And then the first lady to die, Carolyn, is like he's looking at her through the bushes and the bushes are like six feet high. And I'm like, OK, well, that didn't work. But whatever. It's like nitpicky bullshit. But uh, whatever, you know, uh, did you guys like the ending? Did it work for you? I think all of the death scenes were completely fucking ridiculous. They're all ridiculous. But at this point, it's, this is all in his mind. He could have fucking coughed on someone and murdered them and <laughs> like, we're going to buy it. Yeah, for example, I mean, how how did he get to the to the Orange Grove so fast? Well, I know he went down to Mardi Gras and he got a Bible. I know that much. You motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how from a filmmaking perspective, it might feel like a cheap trick, right? I mean, the yeah. whole thing just, it kind of feels far-fetched. It's, it's a little bit ludicrous and, and gimme with the multiple personality thing. And I, and if that's exactly how the, the syndrome works, you know, to the T in real life. Um, and so I can see how, you know, this whole thing playing out, it almost erases a lot of the movie to some people, perhaps. You know, like saying, oh, it was all a dream or, or, or whatever. There's, there's a, there's a little bit of a cheapness to it. But at the same time, I, I love the ending. It, it may not have been like a satisfying ending for a regular movie, you know, the way it ends and which is very horrifying, quite honestly. But yeah. for a horror movie, it works. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, to me, it, I just didn't like it this time around. I remember originally watching it and being like, wow, cool. Fucking kids, the killer. Wow, that's original. Like, that's cool. But watching it now, like I'm older, like I love the first twist. And then when you get to that kid killer, he has the rake and he's like, whatever he says, like horrors don't get second chances or something like that. I'm like, oh, that line, oh. that line was definitely weird. Yeah. I was just like, um, all right, I guess so. You know, I'm like, whatever. I don't, it just didn't work for me. And we'll get into Rotten Tomatoes now because I feel like the people that don't like this movie are kind of with me. I mean, Rotten Tomatoes of this movie, you have a critic score of 62%. 
Um, you have an audience score of 75%, so a little a bit better. Scores, though. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I from my first viewing, before we watched this movie for the pod, I probably would have been around 80, 90%. I really thought I dug this movie. Clearly, I had a different identity when I watched it the second time now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know what happened. But, but, but I did spot out two reviews because I feel like they are what I read a lot of people that don't like this movie. It kind of went on feeling a little bit. So one of them was a two, two out of five stars. This is a Vicky R. I want to shout her out because it's a really funny review. Um, she said, um, ew, it was quite an interesting movie, admittedly because of John Cusack, but I just wasn't happy with the big reveal. I found it a little silly. The ending was ridiculous and overall I was kind of bored. Oh, but I do remember eating a really nice ham sandwich in between. So at least there's that. So- <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> So I wanted to shout out that review. I thought that was a pretty good review. I I, I coincidentally was eating a ham sandwich too. So Vicky, what's up? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> um, <laughs> another review I had was an anonymous. Didn't even let their name. This is a one and a half stars out of five. Ah. Uh, this said a friend Please. of mine told. <laughs> this one says a friend of mine told me this was a good movie. I'd enjoy. We are no longer friends. So that's his whole. That's his whole review of the movie, which I thought was funny too. You know, I don't think I'm that bad. I don't think I'm going to be like Greg and Laura. We're not friends anymore. Uh, but 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 it's just two things. Like, but I did shout out that a lot. You know, a lot of the reviews I read was that people didn't like the ending. They didn't like the ending, or they didn't like the twist. The big the big twist people like not happening at the end. That's really what I read from a lot of people that didn't like this movie. So, I mean, you know, you guys said you enjoyed it. You like little kids that are angry, clearly. You know, sadly, you both have children. So I don't know what's going to happen there. But I just just didn't work on me this time around. I don't know what happened, you know? Yeah, Greg, I'm I'm totally on your same page. I got re-pulled in with every twist. And I can't tell you how many movies I've watched where there have been too many twists. Probably mm-hmm. the same number as this movie or less. And I've been like, this is too much. But yeah. it just managed to give me enough every time and then twist it around into something I was absolutely not predicting. And I think that's why it was so exciting because by the time you get to the end, I really thought, all right, we've we've done it. We've mm. completed this movie. Right. And then there is another one and it's like, what? And it's so mind blowing. <laughs> and it's honestly, it's 50-50. It's remembering how that felt on first watch, yeah. which, you know, so for me, this movie, it's not that it's personal, but I have those fond memories of watching it. But you know what? There are so many movies where the first watch is incredible. And then we talk a lot about rewatchability. And I totally get if someone says that this movie is not rewatchable. I absolutely respect that opinion. For me, it is. I still find it so entertaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Especially looking at Ray Liotta's performance from scene to scene. Rob, you have to agree. Oh, yeah. Every time he delivered a line, you were thinking... How did he come up with that? He knows he if, if he says yeah. the wrong thing, he's going to be outed with the radio, with the medical procedures, with where is he transporting him? And that created so much great tension for me. Mm-hmm. I, and I yeah, felt like yeah. I would not have caught that the first time around. Yeah, that's why I said John Cusack and Ray Liotta to me, like they're they're almost perfect in this movie. They're so great for their characters and everything they do. It's just, man, and watching it this time, it's I get to the end and I'm just like, Timmy, come on. Like, all right, whatever, you know, and then not built in with that. A couple of lines here and there I thought were lame or bad acting. So like I get to the end and just like, man, all right. You know, I don't know if it's the fact that I've seen it before. Like I know what's coming. So like, I'm not like super surprised and just kind of like watching it, analyzing it and just being like, all right, you know, like next what's up, you know? Um, I do want to close the loop on what I said earlier, though. I think it makes sense that it was Timmy and Paris left because you hear all the time that people who have crazy trauma as a kid, they will tend to be stuck in the state where they're still like childlike or Mm. they still act like a child. Mm. And I think that Timmy is like that nine year old version of Malcolm. And so I almost was kicking myself at the end. Like, of course, that's the final character. Of course, that's the killer. Like that is Malcolm. That's where all of his trauma happened. And we keep saying Paris is like his mother, mother, you Mm -hmm. know, she was a sex worker, which didn't work out very well for poor Timmy or poor Malcolm, whatever. And I think that he did want to see his mom do the right thing and change her lifestyle around so that they could both maybe live in an orange grove in Florida. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But because of his trauma and who he is and his mental health, 
it's almost like he doesn't get that happy ending because then that little killer instinct comes out and it's just like, and then that final line, as horrible as it was, mm-hmm. it makes sense for his yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think that's pretty genius, honestly. No, I, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't work on me nowadays. Did you want like a, a more like comedic end? Would it, what if a he had a different, end? no, <laughs> like a gar- different gardening tool? What if he would have had like a hoe in bed? Like, oh, that's, that's too obvious. You can't, you can't do that with a hoe. Yeah. That's way too on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. You want him to throw a Bible at her? <laughs> yeah. I'll throw a Bible at her here and there with a Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's get to the end here. Let's get to our ratings of this movie now. So let's do one to five ratings. I guess you can do a little bit of positive negatives a bit. Uh, let's do how many room keys, how many room keys <laughs> are you giving this movie? Uh, say, save me for last. Cause I definitely think I'm going to be the most different. So let's go Greg first one to five. What do you think? I will toss a bone your way, Robin, say that when you get to the end, there is something empty about the movie. And I, I feel like I can't really put my finger on it. I feel like maybe once you get to the point where you find out all the characters are actually not real in themselves, it sort of takes you out. Like you said, you lose a little bit of that empathy. You kind of don't relate to anyone. But like Laura and like we were saying, I mean, it's all this guy. It's all it's it's the killer. So I think where they went wrong was I would like them to spend a little bit more time on how he came up with these identities, these personalities, (laughs) how they relate to him. Were they similar to the people that he actually killed at the at the apartment, you know, which is being under investigation? Are they representations of people in his life, his parents, himself? I mean, without this, you lose a little bit of interest in these characters, especially toward the end. And you realize they're just imaginary. Um, and again, yeah, a lot of the characters is just one dimensional. So a lot of cliches, which totally sucks because they become annoying. But again, I'm still going to say when you realize that it's from this guy's head, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, there are obvious exaggerations of what he sees people, uh, how he sees people and how he has seen, you know, authority figures and uh, other people that have related to him in his life. So at the end of the day, it's just, it's, it's really entertaining. I thought it was, it was shocking and it's just so clever. And one thing I've noticed in a lot of these movies where I'm giving them very high ratings is if I have a high level of appreciation for what they've executed. And this was one of those movies. You watch it a few times, the set pro- design, the production with the rain. Again, I, I love the damn rain. <laughs> extra star from Greg, extra star from Greg. <laughs> extra room key there. <laughs> But I mean, just you have to appreciate what they did and to come up with this. It was it's fantastic. I'm going to give it four room keys. Wow, four room keys. Wow, that's crazy. What about you, Laura? How many room keys are you giving this movie? I'm giving it four, too. That's oh, been I my s- number. I I had it in my head as soon as I watched it. And I've seen this movie so many times. I think I've spent this entire time talking about all of my positives. Yeah. The reason it's not a perfect five, just obvious, like it's not a perfect five. We talk about there are a lot of cheesy lines, a lot of overacting. It doesn't mm-hmm. bother me, but, um, you know, it's not going to be nominated for Oscar back no. in 2003. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, like I said, I'm going to definitely be the more negative of you guys. I mean, I called out most of my negatives through this. I let you guys uh, do all the positives. So I'm not really going to repeat all that stuff. Um, but I do have to say, like, Greg, you know, the premise is fucking dope. The premise of this movie, I called out the writing of it, like is so genius of making things interconnect to each other. You know, if it was just like a premise and be like, fuck, this is a five. That's fucking a, such a great premise and execution is really great. It's just, you know, some of the little like tidbit things here and there kind of bug me. And then for some reason, just the ending doesn't work for me anymore. It just is kind of like, oh, all right, I guess so. Um, So I'm going to say a three. I think it's still a good movie. You know, it's just not that four to me of like, I really love this movie. You know, to me, five is great. Four, I actually really dig it. Three, I'm kind of like, it's good. It's good. You know, I like most mm-hmm. of it, you know, so I'm going to say a three. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> uh yeah so that's pretty much it for the review this week uh what do we got we got next week we have uh pick your poison laura's first pick your poison nice this should be super fun super cool something different hopefully 
Hopefully I'm not angry through it. Hopefully I don't yell at Laura for her picks and say that they're dumb. Or hopefully I'm not a liar. I don't know. We'll see what happens. What is the what is the pick your poison again, Laura? What are, what are we doing? This pick your poison is called So Extra. And it is our top five uh, horrorish character scene stealers. So they could just be any kind of secondary character who you think stole the show, either a specific scene or the movie. Uh, it just can't be the main like main character or main villain. Dang, I'm going to pick Malcolm from this movie. He fucking stole this movie for me. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> okay. So top five scene stealers from horrorish movies. So- Not just the ones that we have reviewed, but just overall in general. horror. Yeah, movies. overall. I mean, if you bring ones we've reviewed, great. If you bring up some new things, that'll be great. Nice. nice. Is there veto power? Or are we allowed to veto each other if somebody has a dumb thing? <laughs> kind of like that. I mean, it's your pick your poison. I guess you would be the ultimate poison queen. If you're going to make us drink it for somebody or something like that, you know, poison I know. queen. I like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you might you might have to come with some backups because there mm. might be a uh, might be some vetoing going on. Vetoing. Oh, OK. All right. Like if you get a pick veto, you should drink up your poison. So you should take a shot. Yeah. I haven't told you guys what the poison we're going to be drinking is yet. So maybe don't suggest mm-hmm. that. until oh, you know. Oh, what OK. It is. All right. Oh, shit. Maybe OK. Sure. All right. That sounds scary. OK. All right. Well, that's cool for next week. I'm excited for that. Um, and don't forget, we have our schedule out on uh, Twitter and Instagram right now. If anybody wants to see the shows we have coming this month, uh, we also have Conjecture Choice coming up in a couple weeks. So, so keep uh, sending them picks, keep them ringing. Um, you, you guys still, I keep saying it because I keep thinking there has to be a date where these guys don't laugh every time I say it. I feel like we're getting close, but you guys are still laughing. Shit, I still laugh at what's in the cups. You still laugh? Oh my god, that's fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> our listeners are like oh my god this drop again greg again jeez you know um but uh, that's cool uh yeah so uh, you can contact us uh for conjecture choice conjecturing pod at gmail twitter instagram at conjecturing pod or you can leave us a voicemail on our website podpage.com slash conjecturing pod um also if you guys uh, like the show then check out the merch at our merch store like i said i'm wearing my shirt tonight i think greg uh has his uh well he's he's dressed like larry but i think underneath he has his a uh, hoodie hoodie on his headphone jack hoodie um yeah but you can check out our, our merch store our merch store is uh tpublic.com slash user slash conjecturing pod and it, all this you can find on our website check out our website you know it has uh, cocktail mixtures it has fucking dvd shelf with all the ratings and shit laura you, you're laughing because i said cocktail laura what is wrong with you no i'm laughing because you just sound crazy right now i sound crazy oh, okay all right it's, it's my personality <laughs> my identity is popping out right now you sound like jake boosie yeah it's jake boosie coming out yeah <laughs> boosie trying to get that pussy oh. yeah uh <laughs> Oh, shit. Uh, lastly, subscribe, rate, review our podcast. Maybe not from this episode. Don't rate us for this episode, guys. This, this is uh, this is kind of crazy. Uh, and also check out the Slash and Cast podcast <laughs> network, Slash and Cast dot network. Uh, so that's it from the Gold Room tonight. Uh, this has been The Conjecturing. I've been one of my personalities, Rob. And Laura. And Greg. Yeah, until next time, remember Horace Objective, so conjecture your way. See ya. Bye. Peace out. people on Long Island sound. Let's get lit. Let's get lit.